They'll be calling you a radical. First off, before I talk about my march at Washington Square, the shirtwaist fire, post ignorance little gig, breaking news on Fukushima. This being reported by TEPCO's watchdog again. Even higher increases in trinium again in their wells. How many times this in the last 60 days? China syndrome, China syndrome, China syndrome. As the whole nuclear community just sits back and says, well, Dave Parrish down there says it best. Mobs don't know how to fix anything. The car, they don't know how to fix anything. They just know how to create all this nightmare problem. This is the DOE cartel. The nuclear energy, by law, by international law, by all laws, they had to have a plan. Remember what they told us in the early inception? Fucking liars. My gig post ignorance. I'm going to lay out some background. As, remember this. As Fukushima poured out, the debate was whether it even was any kind of meltdown for months, many. I'm the only one that was reporting it was a full core meltdown for many months. It was a full debate till 1212 for well over a year that any plutonium in the ocean for over two years. In fact, I was reporting it within the first 30 days. I reported this in detail day one. My fight with leukemia, who would I ever believe that I got leukemia or cursed spite that I was ever born to set this right? I'm going to talk about my post ignorance gig, well, as people that have watched my videos long before Fukushima ever happened, these cards and letters, long before I ever got ammo, I was setting up my post ignorance, as everybody knows that was watching it, to coincide with the shirtwaist fire. The 2011 100th anniversary, I thought it was the perfect time. It is the event that changed this world, well, this country. It encompassed all. Oh, it, it encompassed the so-called righteous who had completely gone wrong, just like now. As the hairspray phonies, Jesus died so I could be rich. Mega church leaders creeps. This is the capitulation to the end of it all. As the so-called righteous, there's nothing righteous about them. Any person that says they're righteous is a masquerade party. I mean, the hairspray, the Mormons, the born again Christian. I mean, the Catholic Church. I mean. I don't blame this on politicians anymore. I blame this on spiritual leaders. Not one single spiritual leader has any righteousness about them, any morality. They're the opposite. They're all the devils. Every one of them is a freaking devil. Let's all use Martin Luther King's quote as guided missiles and misguided men. They're all misguided. This propaganda war machine. There are no Christians left. There are no you know, so-called people of faith, so people called of righteousness. The Mormons like to wear rings, choose the right, as they always choose the wrong. They sit in their club, just like the born-agains do, just like the Muslims do, just like the Jews do, just like all of them do, sit in their club and for profit. And preach from the pulpit, freaking kill, 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 war factions, machines. I don't hear anybody speak. They're only, they're only people of any morality, any Christian. I don't care if you're an atheist. I don't care if you're Muslim, Jewish, Christian. I don't care. There's nobody out there saying anything. You're all the opposite. The only one out there is Megan Rice. You know, Dorothea Day, people. It kills me how the Catholic community has completely forgot about her and the Catholics were rights. You know, who her mom and dad were. As she says this beautiful quote, as a, we gladly give our lives. Her and Greg and Michael, as they sit in the Senate, those are Christians. Well, th those are, well, I shouldn't even say Christian. I shouldn't even say, those are people of righteousness. There are no people with righteousness. None. That's what this is all about. As those girls jump to their deaths. I was trying to coincide my post ignorance with that. Then we know what happened. 311 happened. Boom. I went crazy. Look, as we used to tell the tale, my father, who was a beautiful, incredible wit, as me and Thomas Ackerman were talking, I says, Roy, great artist are people of incredible wit. He was an incredible man of incredible wit. He, you know, he looked like Elvis Presley with muscles. He was a, you know, he was a Special Forces Marine. I mean, I, I think a lot of him in the same light that I think of Pat Tillman. You tell the story that they took 40,000 of their finest men, Camp Pendleton, and secretly marched them in the desert and Yumini Guinea picked them. As these people say, oh, radiation is not cancer. Radiation is cancer. Autism is cancer. People say, oh, I could prove it. It's the same places on Earth that are the autism capital of the world are the cancer capital of the world. The exact same place. They're perfectly coincided, and I've done this in my work. You tell We live in the cancer capital of the world. We live in the autism capital of the world. It mutates the gene. 300 open-air tests. Southern Utah. American downwinders. I mean, this cartel, the DOE, the nuclear, nuclearism is Megan Rice. 
she says it so perfectly. As Dr. King said it so perfectly. It's, you know, these true people, true righteous people. As none of these people, it's a mask ratio. Hairspray, I blame this, I don't blame any of this on politicians anymore. I believe it on spiritual leaders and their flocks. Their flocks, they are, it, it's a masquerade show for profit. You're immoral, you're all going to the lowest form of hell, whether that be a black hole, whether ever you're going. If you haven't learned yet by watching my videos, as I got leukemia, as you know, AML acute, in the acute bone marrow transplant center. You don't think I had a long time to think about all this as I was slipping in and out of a coma for so long? It's all these beautiful cards and letters as the people that were with me long before Fukushima happened knows what I'm up to. It has to be there because the shirtwaist fire. Those girls. Those girls. I never forgot. They changed the world in equality, in wages, in rights, in righteousness. The nuclear cartel. And if you don't believe me this is of righteousness, then why are they so afraid of the truth? Why? Why is it all lies? Why is everything lies? That's what this comes down to. This comes down to simply post-ignorance, my movement, this whole nuclear capitulation. This just basically comes down to the truth. To the truth. Why do they hate the truth? That's it. This has to be poured out as the truth. I'll read this. As I want to talk about, this necklace was sent to me by a young man in Oregon. He says, Kevin, Everything's so upside down. I was going to kill myself. I was going to commit suicide until I started watching your videos. I want everybody to know as I went off in that real radical, crazy, intense way as I do. I don't speak like that. I don't. But I let, as I call it, contained passion take over. I look back on it. It was so appropriate. It was so appropriate. I was going to do a real intense, radical video like some of those early ones the other day, and I thought, why? The video, people can watch those early videos, and you wouldn't be able to tell if I did those like I did the one on 3 12, 11, or I did it today, 8, 20, 13. That's how nothing has changed. So I'm like, they're already there. Just watch these. It was so appropriate. I'm so glad I did it because that is the art of this. It's always the artist. As I was talking to Thomas Ackerman, and I told him, look, what are artists, really artists of any meaning? They're humanitarians. They're humanitarians. That's who they are. Post ignorance is about social equality. It's about fairness. It's about the truth. We don't want a stack deck. They have the stack deck on it. You know, Occupy did so much. It's the people, I was at Washington Square in 2010. This precedes Occupy by, people know, I was in there. I was trying to coincide with it. The people who started Occupy in its inception weren't communications with me. I was going back and forth with them. They're like, come on, Zuccata, we're going to do it there. And I'm like, you know, Wall Street, you know, the economics, and I'm so sick and tired of everybody out there saying, oh, this is going to happen if this happens, number four goes, if, oh, the dollar's going to crash, it already happened. This isn't about what's going to happen. This has happened. We have, we're living the apocalypse now. The economic freaking nightmare crash, it already happened. We are in the trenches of it. Yeah, is everybody in denial with their fake styrofoam piece of shit house and their false equivalency and their false equity? The freaking Fukushima nightmare happened. The nuclear freak bomb blew up. It already happened. It's killing us now in North America. 200,000 people have already died in North America from Fukushima. I could prove it. I could prove it. As I laid in that bone marrow transplant center fighting for my life, and I watched this. When my father died, I'll never forget it. It was, it was a, the pure romantic tragedy. The whole family, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, everybody gathered around him. He died at sunset on this beautiful, romantic place that we live out here on the ancient lake floor in the hot, hot desert in northern Utah, as I call it, the nuclear triangle, nuclear aesthetics. Everybody's gathering around, and he passed. It was so horrible watching a man in the prime of his life with his mind on fire have to go through that. I've watched it over and over with Paul Carter, these people in our bone marrow transplant. I said, you know, my lifelong best friend, one of my lifelong best friends since I was a boy. His funeral was amazing, by the way. As they cleared out, you know how it is, the mortician arrives. And there's a young mortician, I'll never forget it. And everybody cleared out. He says, it's time for us loading body bag. Here we go. I said, I'm not leaving. He says, why? And I says, because I want this to burn into my psychic and soul so fucking hard. I want this to wound me and scar me so hard. As I used to tell everybody I was living in the country and western version of Hamlet. Boy, am I, oh, cursed spite, was I ever born to set this right? And I'll say this to the nuclear industry. There's some room for you 
here's some for me, but you must wear your rue with a difference. It is Shakespearean in a real context. There is no righteous. The moral leaders, they're devils. The Mormons, the born-again Christians, the politicians, all these people that claim religion, the mega church, they're devils. They are the opposite of righteous. Megan Rice, she's righteous. This is about righteousness. This is about truth. This is about honor. This is about dignity. This is about the things that we all teach our kids. We need the moms to rise up. This is mass murder. This is the way you are in this way that you want to be in this or not. I see post-ignorance like this. As a pure art movement, the concept of art itself, and the concept of artist culture, and the concept of people or culture, and the concept that inspiration influenced our great historical artists, like Van Gogh, Malay, like poets referenced to Gandinsky, like Monet, to the sunlight, morning, dawn, winter, fall, spring light, is influenced by the emotiveness of the time. My look at culture and art there is today, economic theory, popular culture, art thereof, the lack thereof, thereof, the mind. I've seen when others from some cognitive reason do not see. Everyone saw life for millenniums. Everyone saw a simple life for millenniums. Everyone saw a collected color for millenniums. It is more per se than the artist. Monet saw the light. Millet saw the struggle. Van Gogh saw the line. Smithson saw the simplicity of the line and shape against the landscape. Kaninsky saw the election of color and shape. Pollock saw the color of dynamics in motion. But much more than that, they saw decades ahead of the truth. Their minds saw fact and truth. Their minds were strong enough to act upon what they understood. When others did not understand, not yet. They had strong backs and knew how to work. They were the purification of ambition, intelligent education, smooth with work ethic. I visualize, I can go on and on and on. Remember those? I tried to hike the leukemia out of my body. I've walked so many miles in so many places. I don't have to say spend a freaking mile in their shoes. So they say I used to eat, sleep, drink it. Now I literally sleep with it. It has to be at Washington Square. I hope this coincides all over the country. I don't care if it's in your backyard with a YouTube camera. I don't care if it's up your block. September 28th, we're going to do this. You know, it's just coincide. This is about the truth. This is the and the nuclear industry doesn't like us. And, you know, we're going to go down to ha Alexander Hamilton's grave for a reason. To the exchange, to the Coast Guard down there. When we set up usury laws. People, what's usury? Righteousness. We want a fair deal. Now it's in the jet stream. This cuts across all the, I don't give a damn how much money you got. I don't care if you're the richest hedge fund squeezel scheme and his banker that ever freaking lived. I don't care if you're Jamie Dimon himself. As Steve Jobs. And one of my doctors was one of the team that treated him. They threw the kitchen sink at Steve Jobs. Multiple transplants. You name it. This cuts across it all. Uncle Tom. Oh boy, is this Uncle Tom. The nuclear cartel or you Uncle Tom. I hope every one of you get cancer of the freaking mouths and suffer so hard. I hope it goes up into your eyes and burns. That's way too good for you. As the spiritual leaders and the religion, you're not spiritual. There's nothing righteous about you. I don't care. The born again, all these people, the mega church readers, the Mormons, all you, all of them, all you people that preach and their flocks, you're devils. You hate the truth. This is about the truth. Stay on tune it.